You know, going through a betrayal situation is crippling. It can take you from the highest place in your life to some place that is just completely dark. And in this place, you just question yourself. And the thing is, is the fastest way to get through this is to be able to forgive yourself and have some sort of self-love. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk about the fastest way to get over the pain of a divorce or pain of betrayal so that you can move on with your life as fast as possible. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray to Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. You know, when you're in this painful place, you have to give yourself permission to heal. Most guys don't wanna do that. They wanna just beat themselves up over and over and over again, thinking that the more they beat themselves up, they're gonna take more action and then whatever's gonna happen. They go into this place where they just feel bad about themselves. And you can do that if you want, but the problem is it doesn't give you any kind of solutions. You're beating yourself up, telling yourself you're not good enough, telling yourself that it was your fault that she cheated, telling yourself that if you had done something different, you could have made a different change. And that while that may be true, you didn't know. Like you just didn't know. And so give yourself permission to take some time to heal from this process. It's gonna take some time. Now time doesn't necessarily heal all, but it helps you forget about the bad things and it gives yourself some room to breathe. And most guys, when they get into this place where they find out that their wife is cheating on them, the first thing they do is they go scramble to get her back. They scramble to get her back instead of going and looking within and what happened and why it went wrong to begin with. And so take time, be kind to yourself, allow yourself to breathe, allow yourself to feel these emotions, allow yourself to feel the sadness. Allow yourself to actually just be present with you. I can guarantee that the fact that you got into this situation is because you were not doing that. You were not present with yourself. You were present with her. You were present with your work. You are present with everything else except for the one thing that mattered was you. And so because you weren't present with yourself, you weren't able to connect with her. And so instead of seducing your wife, you ended up getting in this place where you're just scrambling for everybody else's approval and attention. And so now this is the time for you to have space to allow yourself some space. And in this place, you forget completely who you are. You have no idea who you are because you're doing everything for everybody else and nothing for yourself. You have forgotten who you are. And so this is the first step that we have to take is get clear on who you are. Who were you outside of this marriage? Who were you besides being a father, a business owner? Like, who were you? Because if you're living to everybody else, if you're just killing yourself for this business all the time, your wife left you and everything fell apart, and then you're like, I don't know who I am anymore because my entire identity was wrapped up in this marriage, who I was supposed to be as a father and where we were going in this relationship with this woman. And because of this, you don't know who you are anymore. And so part of this process is this loss of identity, this loss of identity of yourself. And so because that identity is now dead, there is a mourning process that must occur. You're mourning a death. You're mourning who you thought your wife was. You're mourning who you thought you were gonna be. You're mourning who you are right now. And so this entire identity shift is a mourning of the character that you created in your mind. And you have to allow this process to unfold naturally. If you try to subjugate it or try to arrest it by sedating with alcohol or drugs or looking at porn or playing video games, going to sports, you're gonna just delay the inevitable, which is you're gonna to have to come to terms with it. And you're not gonna to come to terms with it until you allow the mourning process to complete. The good news is it's a finite process. It will complete on its own if you allow it to be there and you don't keep making it worse by drumming it up and being the victim in this. It's really easy to sit in this place of guilt and shame. You know, no guy wants to let other people know that his wife's cheating on him. It's incredibly embarrassing and it hurts tremendously and you don't want to bring it up. You don't want to bring it up because those guys probably aren't going to understand what it's like. Most men will just tell you to just go get with somebody else or just get over it or kick her out or just treat her like shit. And the thing is, is that you don't want to do that because you don't want to go into this place of shame. And yeah, you had some shameful actions. Maybe you weren't present with her. Maybe you put all your time and attention into your business or you're spending your time drinking because you were just already overtaxed and you couldn't be present with the kids and you couldn't be present with her. And over time, she started berating you and more and more and more about how you just couldn't be good enough and you just weren't doing the things she wanted you to do. And then at the same time, she's telling you that she's not attracted to you and that she doesn't want to have sex with you and that you're failing all the time. And so when you come out of this betrayal situation, you come out of this place where she's cheated on you, there's a lot of guilt and shame as to what you should have been doing. But the thing is, it's not your fault. Because if you thought you could do something different, you would have done something different. And you know this, like look at yourself right now. If you could have done something different, you would have, but you didn't understand or understand or really feel the gravity of the situation. And even if you did, did you even know what to do differently? And so you might as well just drop the guilt and shame because if you knew you could have done something different, you would have done it. So you know now that you're gonna do something different. 
The guilt and the shame is only there to get you to try to change. And by this point, I guarantee you probably learned your lesson. That guy who did all those things, that guy is fucking dead. And so if you want to start feeling better, give yourself permission to forgive yourself so that you can move forward into this new place that you want to create and that you want to have in your life. And you might not have been doing it before, but now is the time to start prioritizing your self-care. In other words, let's do some things that are enjoyable for you versus sedating and hiding. Let's make sure you're going to the gym. Start eating right. Start dressing better. Start becoming the guy you should have been the whole time. Start becoming the guy you should have been to begin with. Because your kids deserve it. You deserve it. Anybody who's going to be in your life in the future deserves the best version of you. Not this guy who's sitting on his couch wallowing in self-pity or watching his phone on the toilet right now trying to hide from his coworkers. This guy right here is the guy that needs to tap into his indomitable spirit. That part of him that doesn't give up. That part of him that knows that he can create anything he desires if he doesn't hide. And so be kind to yourself. Start prioritizing your own self-care. And you can't do this alone. In fact, I know you can't do this alone because I've had over 3,500 success stories coming through Genuine Attraction dealing with this particular issue. And these are guys that are in a tight as hell tribe that have all gone through this kind of pain, this pain of betrayal. And you, as a guy, you're gonna wanna go it alone. You're gonna wanna go out there and you're like, I, don't, I got this, bro, I don't need to talk about this. I've got this, I'll figure this out. The thing is, you might figure it out, but it'll take you years, probably decades. And for most men that I have noticed, they never actually take care of it. They get to a point where they start sedating just enough where they don't have to deal with the pain, but then their ex-wife calls or texts them, and now he's, he's through two bottles of Tums because the heartburn is so bad. Or he's down to drinking himself stupid again, driving a car, flipping his truck in a ditch, and then he gets a DUI and loses his license, and now he can't even sell his real estate. And so don't be that guy. Be the guy who goes out there and builds a support network. Get with people that are willing to help you, to be with you, to care about you, to actually give a shit about what's going on with you. And then in this place, you're gonna find that you're gonna build out this support network that you can actually meet somebody else. You don't meet people online. I mean, you can, but it's like going to monster.com. You go there as a last resort. The best people you meet are the ones you meet in person. Why? Because you get to know them, you get to feel them, you get to understand their energy and see their sense of trust. And so you, trying to isolate in your cave, your pain cave, it's not gonna help you. You have to start building an emotional support network. Get, with, get outside the house, go be with friends, go to a game, go do something. But you're sitting at home and wallowing in your pity and sitting there just extended mourning process is not helpful, you gotta get moved. Next step is you gotta forgive yourself. At some point you'll forgive your ex, but you won't forgive her until the pain has diminished enough to where it doesn't bother you anymore. So don't try to force that forgiveness. That'll come on its own if you deal with your own issues internally. The first step is getting rid of the guilt and shame, as we talked about earlier, but giving yourself permission to heal, giving yourself forgiveness that you did the best you could with what you had, that you just didn't know any better, and that you didn't know what to do different because you didn't have an emotional support network of guys that knew how to do this. But the thing is, you're in a different place now. You're a different kind of guy. You've already transformed from that guy. That guy's fucking dead. So you get to choose who you want to be now, and the only, that guy is on the other side of forgiveness. And the more you keep beating yourself up, the more you're going to stay in the pain cave. I can tell you from experience that this will last you for years. And for most men, they never get past this. I know this because I watch men do this all the time. I even watch my own father do this. He still deals with these issues because he refuses to go and actually address them. And so he doesn't have an actual relationship with his ex-wife, not a healthy one. In fact, he avoids her at all costs. Even though all his kids are grown and there has no significant attachment to her at all, it still bothers him just like it'll do for you if you don't get this shit handled. So even though you're going through all of this, you've forgiven yourself, you find yourself love, emotional support network, and so on, you have to be able to build your confidence again. The first way you build your confidence is start getting competent in different areas of your life that you get to be proud of. In other words, start building a life that's awesome for you. Start seducing yourself, seducing a life for you that's awesome and amazing. When you're able to build this, you're gonna start acting like your life is a vacation. And this is a seductive lifestyle. So if you want to have a woman into your life, you want to seduce a new woman, you want to seduce your wife back, you have to seduce yourself. You have to create a seductive lifestyle that you absolutely fucking love. And that doesn't happen sitting on a couch wallowing in your own pity. You have to move. You have to get moving forward. Start creating things that are really important to you, really awesome and fun. When you start doing this, now you're creating something somebody wants to be a part of. You're creating a life that somebody now finds very seductive. If you're going out there and doing big shit, and you're feeling awesome about it, going to the gym, lifting weights, building a business, building out your hobbies, going to exciting places, adventures and travel, getting your personality to open up so that you can actually attach to people and people can attach to you, open up so that you can really have a good time and conversation, not just lock up and be bored. You being able to be open 
and having a good time is where your confidence is going to come. But that's going to take some work. We got to get you from this place of self-pity to getting a little bit angry and saying, fuck this, I'm fucking going forward. Once we can tap into that kind of anger, and this is where anger is healthy, then you can start moving forward. I hear so many guys come out there and say, well, anger never solved anything. It solves a lot of fucking things. It'll solve you getting out of this pain cave. Because once you start getting angry by being in a pain cave and you want to move forward, then you'll start seeing the value of anger. Anger will also build up your boundaries. Anger will also teach other people to treat you well. And I guarantee you, you're in this place because you did not get angry enough. So the next stage for you is to get angry. Brother, if you're ready to start taking action, if you're ready to start doing the work because you're tired of sitting in a self-pity that never seems to end and you're just fucking sick of sitting here in this place and you're just like, I'm going to take some action, check out this video here. We're going to talk about the greatest comeback of your life. If you like this video, Obviously hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want me to answer a question for you, go ahead and comment below.